Very well, my friends, it is time. I extend my hand, inviting you to step with me into fantasy. Release your hold on that which you know to be true, and let imagination rule for the next few hours. time, the adventurers convened at the Sea Tower of Balduran to make their report to Captain Zaj. However, before they did, Persephone revealed that she had been asked to embark on a dangerous mission on behalf of her cousin, Australis Ravengard, daughter of Grand Duke Ulda Ravengard. She plans to impersonate her gravely ill aunt, Shasra, and convince the Parliament of Peers not to call a vote for a new Grand Duke. As Persephone was explaining this plan, Rim noticed a large carrion crow that seemed to be watching the group a little too intently. It managed to dodge Rim's arrow and escaped, but uneasiness fell upon the adventurers. Meeting in Captain Zaj's office a short time later, you were read a proclamation from Duke Thalamra Van Thampur, who used the apparent murder of her son Mortlock to sow more doubt regarding the peacekeeping abilities of the Flaming Fist during Ravengard's absence. Incensed by Thalamra's call for a vote of no confidence and possible dismanment, members of the Flaming Fist began to riot in the Sea Tower Yard, only to be quelled by a spectacular speech from Persephone, the repercussions of which have yet to be fully realized. This crisis averted, Falcon was surprised to see Sissa Elmsweet from the Shrine of Suffering. She had come to the Sea Tower seeking aid for her father, Brother Hodges Elmsweet, who had gone down into the crypts below the Shrine of Suffering, investigating an explosion. The adventurers traveled to the shrine and managed to defeat a large carrion crawler and its brood that had taken up residence there. They also found evidence of a strange cave-in and a badly scorched corpse. Around the corpse's neck was a symbol of Zariel the Fallen, the ruler of Avernus, the first layer of the Nine Hells. After finding Brother Hodges and returning him safely to his family, the adventurers quickly made their way back to Persephone's home in the Steeps, where they were met by Sir Gatherin Stag, the head of the Ravenguard household guard. Persephone and Rim got into the palanquin he had provided, and the two of them began heading towards the upper city and the Ravenguard estate in the Manorborn district. The rest of you followed, and that is where we will begin this evening. I think it might be interesting to check in on Persephone and Rim inside the palanquin. <laughs> uh, well, I really hope that the plan to heal her works because the more and more I think about the consequences, the more and more scared I am for tomorrow. I, I would agree. Did your cousin say anything about what was ailing her? She you know, I, if she did, it wasn't in enough detail for me to understand. I just know that she was beyond able to go in. Uh, so I'm sure that we can talk to her about the details of that when we arrive, but I doubt she would come to me if it was something simply healed. Do you feel confident enough that you might be able to pass as her if necessary? I believe that... I look enough like her, I believe in my skills, but I also know that there could just be some dumb luck that could blow the whole thing wide open that we couldn't control. So while I believe it's possible, I, I also think it is just undeniably risky. But what do we risk if we allow the vote to go through? No, you're correct. I think that the consequences of allowing her to ascend are far too great to not take this chance either way. 
guess we could all, I could at the end of the day, just leave the city and run and hide, take a stage name, but if things went wrong, but uh, I would be worried about my family. It's certain. If absolutely necessary, I have a home at the edge of the uh, teeth of woods, wood, uh, woods of teeth, where they would be welcome to stay. Uh, it's a couple hundred miles outside of the city, and it is yours if you need it. Well, if for some reason I'm not able to tell them that, would you please tell them? Of course. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. Agreed. All right. Um, as you are walking, you begin to realize that there's one of your member who, one of your number who might have an even more difficult time getting into the upper city than a giant dragonborn. Those, those, damn, those, those snake people are terrible, aren't they? You just can't take them anyway. <laughs> you're talking about it's don't pronounced have snake people. dwarf and honestly right as sir gathered and the palanquin move at a decent pace despite rim's size you soon move southward out of the steeps and toward the manor gate manor gate is one of the gates that only upper city residents are allowed to use around you you can sense the daily surge of people as they are expelled from the upper city and unlike the crowds at the outer gates, this seems to be a more orderly proceeding. Decades of tradition having bred complacency. You reach the manor gate just as the sun is dipping under the horizon. You there! What load is that? Flaming fist business. Special envoy to the high hall, comes Sir Gadrin's gruff reply. Over here for inspection. Thanks to today's vote, the Flaming Fist is no longer welcome in the Upper City after dark. So, unless you've got a Patriar in there... New order, Sergeant! Comes another voice. Vote was overturned. Flaming Fist is free to move about the Upper City same as usual. Overturned? Why? Not really sure. Not really our place to ask now, is it, Sergeant? Move along there. And it appears that the insignia on the palanquin and on the uniforms of Sir Gatherin and his men of the Flaming Fist will be enough to let them into the upper city, so disguised. The rest of you watch as the palanquin moves through the Manorborn Gate. That takes care of Persephone and Rim. What about the rest of you? To mannequin or not to manacle, I don't know. Perhaps hood up first. Oh, most Unless definitely hood oh, okay. up. Okay, uh, what about if I just sneak in? Uh, you could you certainly think try. You can make that happen. <laughs> or we could... Falcon, do you have a large backpack by chance? I mean, large for a dwarf, but... I don't know, Jax, do you think he could fit inside? Oh, I'll give it a good go. <laughs> Is there any valuables in there? Uh, yes, if you get far enough inside, I'm sure there are. Um, if he, if he do you believe him, or do you want <laughs> him to make him a deception check there, Jax? I <laughs> wink at him a little. It's... <laughs> I don't really want to do a deception check, no. Okay. <laughs> well, no, it would be it would be um, Typhon's deception check to yeah. make you believe that there was. Riches oh, there. okay. Uh, so I'd have to make an insight check. Yeah, it's up to you if you want to roll it. Eleven. All right. I'm I'm pretty sure that that's. Well, we won't bother with that anymore. Into the sack you go. <laughs> so all the way down to the bottom. Right. Okay. I'll have um, into the backpack. Uh, what's in your backpack, Falcon? Well, I uh, say outside of the, the your you, you know your what typical was... adventurers. Uh, so I've you know I got my my blanket and my, I say uh, well a set of clothes, but now uh, those are I'm going to give those up for ghost and uh, some ration. He'll probably eat those. Uh, tinderbox, some vestments, water skin, nothing too 
uh, heinous. Okay. So let's see here. I was carrying uh, 87 pounds uh, of equipment, but not necessarily on my back. Uh, I'll climb in and eat the rations. <laughs> try, try to stay as quiet as possible. Oh, I say. All right. In oh, you go. Crackers. Uh, make, make, a, <laughs> make a stealth check, please, Jade, as the rest of you approach the gate. Eat quieter. 17. All right. You approach the manor gate. Right then. Ah, uh, Flaming Fist, I see. Uh, apparently we're supposed to let you all in after all. So. Fine. So. The, the, uh, the sergeant does not look pleased. Um, but his uh, superior officer, having given him a direct order, he lets you all in. Um, of course, Typhon being a resident of the upper city, you would have been able to get in regardless. Um, but uh, the rest of you would have had a hard time of it if your Flaming Fist insignia had not been honored, but they are they for sm- some reason. And in you go. There are no f- prayer of thanks as we uh, <laughs> cross through the gate. There are no further delays on your journey, and you eventually arrive at the Raven Guard estate in Manorborn on the upper city's west side. Most of the Parliament of Peers live here, as do the old, proud families who trace their lineages back to Balderon's day. Climbing gardens, fountained courtyards, and private orchards adorn many of these elegant homes. Most Patriar manors are townhomes rather than freestanding mansions, for the upper city has always been constrained by its walls, and even the wealthiest families are limited to narrow footprints. That is not the case for the Ravenguard estate. Clearly, being the Archduke has its advantages. It's good to be the Archduke. This mansion is both tall and wide, looming at least three stories high and dominating this block of the Mannerborn district. There is a ten-foot wall surrounding the main house, and you are stopped at the gate. Sir Gathern exchanges a few words with the guard, and then you are ex- escorted out of the palanquin and up to the front door. Along the way, you can see two ancillary buildings that butting the wall, a small barracks, and a stable, unusual for inside the walls of the city. The large door of the stately manor opens, spilling golden light out into the courtyard. A tall, elderly human male with a long, pointed beard is standing at the doorway. Good evening. My name is Chosric, and I am the head of the Raven Guard household staff. Welcome to Riverstone Manor. The young mistress is waiting for you in the library. What do you do? Uh, thank you. Um, and I, I go to follow. All right. Uh, around this time, the rest of you reach the gate. Um, and at a look from Sir Gatherin, you are also ushered in. You all meet at the front steps, and in you go. Tall candelabras at wall sconces shine warm light onto the dark wood and masonry that surrounds you. On the floors are spread large, exotic-looking rugs, deeply dyed and intricately patterned. A long hallway intersects with the entranceway, and a wide black marble staircase heads upstairs. As you cross to the library, you catch a brief glimpse of a large hall with a roaring fireplace, massive stained glass windows, and mounted animal trophies. The air smells of cedar and state and sage. You step into the library, which looks down on you with disapproval. Some libraries are comfortable, inviting places of relaxation. Some are austere, free of distractions and studious. This one is almost overwhelming in its ostentation. The books are all behind blue crystal glass cases with silver trim, and each piece of furniture looks as if it could be used to buy a small village. 
This is a room meant to display wealth and power. It is likely that very little reading is done in this library. Looking very small, Australis is sitting on a large, uncomfortable-looking city. She stands as you enter. You came, and you brought friends. Yes. I thought hard about whether or not I should bring them, and I think I've made the right choice. I did not ah. bring these people lightly. I see. So many. Um, but, uh, of course, you know best. Are they all, are they all actors? Oh, no. Um, they're adventurers. And, and you, you trust them? She yes. She leans closer to you. With my life. Well... Oh, 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 all right then. Um, welcome to Riverstone. Um, it's cozy. <laughs> yes. Um, hmm. She bites her lip a little thoughtfully. <sighs> Perhaps we should relocate to a more interior room. I agree. Have you eaten? No. Well, one of us hasn't stopped since we started our work here. It's all right. I'll pop my head out and I'm like, so run it by me again. We're not here to loot. Back in oh the pack. My. Back in the pack. Back in the pack. No, what? I know I know that that must look confusing, but you just need to trust me. The polymorphed noble. Someone mentioned food. Uh, uh, she looks confused and then relieved and then confused and... Then she shakes her head and she says, uh, very well. And she rings a bell and Chosrick appears. Yes, young mistress. Chosrick, I've been an adult for six years. <sighs> anyway, have food brought to the tap room and prepare rooms for our guests. You will, of course, be spending the night. Yes. Excellent. The hospitality of Riverstone is open to you. And Tosric, have our visitor join us. Do you have someone here too? Um, in a moment. Sir Can Gadrin, I do Sir an Gadrin, Gadrin oh. is in there as well, and he's just sort of <sighs> size. You, he's he's wearing a helmet, <laughs> but you hear an echo inside it. Uh, what did you say? I was going to do an inside check to see if anything seemed fishy about her reaction when I asked that. Um, go right ahead. All right. Click the right thing. I'll pop my head out. Uh, I'll pop my head out again. It's really stuffy in there. It might be a goblin lady. It'll be a lot stuffier in the jail if you don't keep yourself hidden. Just, I promise, Jax. We'll feed you. All right. Uh, Persephone with a roll of 21. She is um, not used to playing hostess. Um, it's probable that this sort of meeting in the library, um, meeting people and all this sort of thing is something that she has seen her parents do, um, but she hasn't had enough experience with it herself. Um, Regarding the visitor she mentioned, it doesn't seem like she doesn't want to tell you. Um, it's that she doesn't want to tell you at the moment. Got it. So, as you walk further along the midnight blue carpet that runs the length of the hallway, you can see a dining hall, a small gallery, and at the very end of the hallway, what appears to be a music room. Just before you reach this music room, Astralis pushes on the wall and a somewhat hidden door opens, revealing a cozy looking tavern, complete with stools, a game table, and several large casks on rack and tapped. Tap room. Hmm. I look at Falcon and say, it is good to be the Arch, the Grand Duke. <laughs> So, um, 
This is more cozy, don't you think? Actually, yes. I've always hated that room. I can't um, imagine why. So cozy. That, everyone, um, <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not very good at serving, and, and I don't want to call any servants. Does anybody know how to work this thing? And she's Oh, sort of, never yeah. you mind. I immediately go ahead and cross behind the bar. I slough my pack off. No. Uh, <laughs> you'll can be I, fine. Can I come into the out now? You can come out to the inn, yes. <laughs> okay. I'll... Very nice. So the, this tavern is, it's not like a lar- it's large tavern. It's, it's a room that happens to have a bar that has been designed to look like a tavern. But it's there a... is a game table, there's a, some darts, um, several stools, and she... Uh, goes over and lights a few more lamps and it is somewhat cozy and you all have a seat and a drink Hmm. so uh, what all has Persephone told you and and who are you all (laughs) I am Fulcran Boneforge a cleric of the Temple of Ilmater and this is my friend Jax the Hungry Goblin I see. My name is Typhon Ophiacus, Dr. Typhon. I'm a humble herbalist from down near the other gate. Ah, which gate? There's like six. Right. Um, <laughs> the fifth It was the one. first one we went through. Uh, I forgot the name of it. Um, the Baldur's Gate? The old original yes. gate? Okay. Yes, old, <laughs> old Baldur's Gate. That one. It's, sure. it's a, one of the old upper city gates. Okay. Uh, I didn't mean to put you on the spot there. Bad the gate. Gates. Sorry, Typhon. And it's a good one. gate, too. Yeah. <laughs> no, I best, live near a gate. The best gate. <laughs> Just, uh, right. Very well. You're a big fellow. Grim just raises a claw and nods. <laughs> I, I think this is the first time I've ever seen a dragonborn. Are they all so big? Kind of. No, maybe not. <laughs> and she turns to you, um, Silas. I am Silas Khan of Baldur's Gate. Clergy of sorts. Ah, and how do you all know Persephone? Today we are here to guard her, to be her retinue. There's been some unrest. Until recently, we were accompanied by a member of the Flaming Fist. And with the unrest, we felt perhaps it would be good for a diverse cast to be around her. Hmm. Well, I'm still... Well, obviously this this plan has risks, but I I, I really think we, we must do all that we can to prevent prevent the vote from happening if it doesn't if if it does happen i i feel the consequences could be disastrous um at that sir gatherin who's sort of been hanging out in the in the back in the shadows he steps forward and his helmet is under his arm and um you know wait one moment there is sir gatherin and there is lady ostrellis um sir gatherin Steps forward and he says, Lady Ostrellis, I must beg you once again not to do this. Your father and mother would be happy for your rekindled interest in Baldurian politics, but this plan of yours puts you at too great a risk. The consequences should you be. Persephone holds up a hand. I mean, excuse me. Uh, Ostrellis holds up a hand and says, Persephone is an accomplished actress, and I trust her abilities to see us through this. From my perspective, I can see no other choice. Can you? To which Sir Gatherin nods. Yes. Leave the city. Give me one day to prepare, and I can have you, your mother, and some trusted staff on the road to Waterdeep. If I may ask, what is wrong with your mother? Uh, Nobody really knows. We've had several healers. uh, Discreet, you understand. Mm-hmm. examine her um, and none of them have been able to give us a, 
a clear understanding of what ails her. Uh, we have we have some upstairs now with her. Um, one of them knew my father, and um, well, th- there'll be time for that later. But at if- the moment. I would like you all to wait. There's, there's someone else I would like you to meet. Of course. Uh, might shed a bit more light on the circumstances surrounding all of this. If we could, I, of course, am very interested in meeting whoever you wish us to speak to, but we do have quite an accomplished doctor in our party, and I myself would, would love to see if I could aid your mother in any way. Well... I suppose that would be all right. Sir Gatherin is frowning. Is I must protest. These people have not been vetted properly. You've taken great pains to make sure that everyone who attends your mother has proper credentials. These people off the street, trusted by your cousin, though they may be. And Australis sort of, sort of takes a step back, and she looks to you, Persephone. We are all taking risks with people that we don't know and need to trust right now, us included. We have just as much to lose, if not more. Make a persuasion check. Fifteen. That is definitely enough to persuade Astralis that she nods her head and just, yes, absolutely, more than enough. And Sir Gatherin, he steps back into the shadows, and as he does, he's wearing a beautiful, deep, deep, dark green cloak, uh, almost black. The interior of it has a sort of a sparkle to it, and you can see it somewhat as he's in the shadows. As as he steps back, I say, um, oh, nothing, because I've forgotten what I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens, so what mm, happens was mm, this. Mm. <gasps> and you drink a glass of <laughs> right. There is a, a knock at the door, and stepping into the room is a woman wearing armor and a cloak. And behind her are two of the guard, the Raven Guard, the Raven, the Raven Guard Guard. Uh, the Raven Guard Household Guard. That actually, <laughs> that, that, that rolls a little better. Um, and they escort her into the room. So Gatherin nods and gestures the guards out and he stands close to this woman. To who? This Sorry, I'm... The woman in the armor that just walked in. Yes. Mm. This is Rhea Mantelmorn. She arrived here several days ago, arrested by Flaming Fist operatives in the lower city, but these were operatives, soldiers, but more directly linked to my father than the sea tower. And so rather than take her there, they brought her here. She has interesting stories to tell. We would love to hear them. She uh, looks at you all and she takes a deep breath and nods. Um... My name is Rhea Mantelmorn, and I am the Hellrider of Eldorel. And now that she says that, you can see that underneath her cloak, she bears the red and white signature armor of the Hellriders, who are being hunted currently in the city of Baldur's Gate, because they seem to foment rebellion wherever they go. Well met, Hellrider. How have you survived? 
We were told that the Hellriders were all destroyed at Etoril. No, no, the, the, the ones who weren't in the city at the time are not lost. I was training a few miles north when the city vanished. Um, what do you know of Elthorel? You were told that the city was lost. Um, anyone who's proficient, feel free to make a history check. I will not, because I'm not proficient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be a Whoops. new. All right, that is a six <laughs> for Persephone. Um, you pretty sure that El Terrell is, uh, well, it's, it's east somewhere, maybe on the river? <laughs> Not really 100% sure. You know, you think it's referred to as the holy city of El Terrell. But you're not sure why or what. Oh, Is she I, the only one profession in history? Oh, I skipped my history lessons. Well, I, I think in general it's not too far away and there's some history between the cities. I think oh. we would probably at least know. Mm -hmm. Is it a militant city? Is it a merchant city? Well, and we Something heard that, like that song, if we can remember that song. In the Elf Song, song Tavern, yeah. about, mm -hmm. the, about the Hell Riders. Interesting. Yeah. What do you recall from that? It, it told the story of the beginnings of the Hell Riders in sort of a lament form, right? Uh, the fall of them? Make a make a just a straight intelligence roll. That's that's what I remember. My goblin has keen mind. If that helps, no, it, it doesn't really. Oh, wow. so don't, you, don't, it, no, it, it would have really. been very yeah. useful in this situation, but you I weren't there for the thing. But twenty one. Uh, twenty one. I, I I bet that Persephone remembers all the lyrics of the song. Hmm. Um, possibly, uh, but with a twenty one uh, intelligence, uh, Typhon. You recall, uh, yes, the song did refer to Hellriders, and it referred uh, in particular to something called the Companion. Um, I do believe you, we spoke of this before. The, you the know, protector. Yes, sorry. The, the, you know that the Companion is a massive ball of light that shines down upon the city of El Terrell like a second sun. Um protects the city from unholy things indeed. yes that that that's correct i i was i was eating and looking across the countryside at the city in the distance and i saw the light of the companion grow red and then brown and then black it seemed to suck all the light around it into itself. And the walls crumbled and the city, the whole city sank below the horizon. I, I ran as fast as I could. We, we all did, we ran. But when we reached it, it was nothing but a crater. It was horrible. I, Had I, it been destroyed or burned, or was it simply No, it's gone? just gone, gone. There's no, no wreckage, no bodies. Just, just people lying around, disbelief, wailing, crying for their loved ones. I, I led a group of them to Baldur's Gate. And we managed to sneak in just as they were closing it, but then I was I was attacked by by people, peacekeepers, so-called flaming fist, and they they tried to. Well, I I fought them off, but I've been wanted ever since. I had heard that that the leader of El Terrell. He had, he had also escaped. The grand proprietor, Thavius Krieg, he had made it to Baldur's Gate, but 
No one knows where he is. And I heard a rumor that he was seen being escorted by guards from the Bandampur estate. But I, I couldn't get into the upper city, so I looked to find Amrik, who I heard spent time at the Low Lantern, but he wasn't there. And then I was captured and brought here. And I've been here ever since. How long has that been? Australis says, she arrived here two days ago. And Rhea says, I arrived in Baldur's Gate uh, a few days before that. I haven't been here long. I, I think we, I, I must talk to Favius Krieg. I, I'm sure that he knows something. He's always been a good leader. He's, he's part of the reason why we have the companion at all. A good and holy man. I'm sure he understands what has happened, or, or at least knows a way to undo it, if, if it is possible that such a thing can be undone. And you saw him in the company of Van Thampur estate guards, you say? Uh, no, I, I didn't see it myself. It was just a rumor. And, and so I asked around, and I found out that there was one member of the Van Thampur family who sometimes went outside of the Hepperick City, and I knew where to find him, but, but he wasn't there. And what did he look like? What did they say he looked like? Davius Krieg. Oh, well, I've, I've, I've never met the man. But they, they said it was him. Sean, what was the name of the... Of Mortlock. The, Mortlock, or thank Amrick. you. Or, Mortlock is the one yeah. who you fought with. Uh, who fought alongside great. with in the Dungeon yeah. of Bed 3, and Amric is the one who he said that you could maybe kidnap. question and kidnap <laughs> or such a sort of thing. And, and he, that he was right. he would be at the Low Lantern Tavern, right. but not for a few days. Gotcha. Hmm. And so she sits down, sort of, she has a, a bit of a far away gaze as she sits and um, Australis hands her a small cup of ale as she does she sort of leans to you Persephone and says I don't know if we can trust her or not but she's our best link to what might have happened to my father I agree and I think our party has some information that maybe could help. But unfortunately, I think that your mother and tomorrow's vote is the more pressing matter. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Um, well, if, if you would all like to come with me. And Sir Gatherin says, Come, Miss Madabon. Uh, I'll say that's not her name. Come, Miss Mantlemorn. Well, we'll return you to the barracks. And Rhea nods and stands and exits with Sir Gatherin. And he turns to look at you all. Do not overtax. Mistress Ravenguard. He turns we don't to want to. Anybody want to say or do anything else? Um, well, Jax has probably had quite a few beers by now. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, lovely. Mm. So is Falkern, probably. No goblin like a drunk goblin. Mm-hmm. Ain't no party like a goblin party, because a goblin party don't stop. Until he's snoring in my backpack, yeah. <laughs> um, so you wish to go to the bed chamber? I don't see there's... I mean... Uh, our options were to what, seek out this Krieg and see if he knows if there's any sign or word of of the Lord uh, Ravenguard. It, it, that won't stop the vote from happening in 24 hours. Well, we can we can do that after we handle either 
healing the head of the Raven Card House, or we, or or after I either succeed or fail in pretending to be her, but but oh, yeah. I don't see how we can accomplish anything between now and then. Agreed. I think our best bet is to see how, what we can do for the lady of the house. Yes, let's have a look, shall we? Very well. You are led upstairs, ascending the main stairway and finding another long hallway which seems to extend the length of the level, this time carpeted in crimson. Stepping out from the stairway, the grand hall from below is visible, a sturdy balustrade creating a balcony of sorts along the 40 feet or so of the hallway that are open to the floor below. There are two impressive suits of full plate armor standing there, but they are obviously decorative. However, the two heavily armed guards that stand outside of the master bedroom are definitely not for show. At Australis's nod, one of them knocks and opens the door. Standing directly in front of you is a tiefling woman with alabaster skin and dark hair. Her beautiful features accentuate her grim expression. She is well armored, and her hand is clenching the hilt of a bastard sword at her side. Around her neck hangs a silver symbol of a gauntleted hand, a mystic eye emblazoned on its back. I would prefer it if you waited until I opened the door before entering Lady Ostratus. Your preferences have been noted, Pilgrim, but this is my house. I will walk where I please. And who are these? Friends. Here to have, help. Have they been vetted? As much as we're going to be. We wouldn't have gotten this far had we not. Your security is so thorough. Hmm. She glares at you. She glares at all of you. She looks like she spends a lot of time glaring. The bedroom is large and beautifully decorated, although it is dimly lit, and it seems permeated by a sepulchral calm. This is a room of sickness. Against the eastern wall is a large bed, canopied and luxurious. Amongst the covers and pillows, you can see the form of a sleeping woman. Hmm. May I approach? I would also like to approach. If Sitting that's all on right. a chair at her side is a youthful-looking, bespectacled elf. Male. He is wearing a heavily embroidered robe, and he stands and bows as you come forward. Uh, Mistress Ravengard, there has been no change. I am at a loss. Who are these people? Uh, Dr. Ophiakis here to lend a hand, and Falcon Boneford. Cleric of the House of Elmater. Ah. Well, uh, if it is all right with Lady Ostratus, and Lady Ostratus nods, uh, please, uh, I've done everything I know to do. Certainly, and who do we have the pleasure of speaking to? Oh, yes, um, my name is Thadria. Thadria. Um, Thadria Green. Thadria, what have you observed so far? Well, it, it, it doesn't behave like any disease that I've ever encountered. It um, doesn't even behave like poison. I've seen elements of several common diseases, in, including the one that she seems to be suffering from now, the red web. But I'm fairly certain it's not red web. I mean, if it were, we would have all been infected days ago. At the mention of Red Web, Silas takes a step back. The, uh, my only conclusion that I can come to is that she's cursed somehow. 
and um, Pilgrim, the uh, armored tiefling, takes a deep breath and <sighs> shakes her head, walks to stand close to the bed, watching both you, Typhon, and you, Falkron, very carefully. Hmm. But, but I'm, please, ha have a look for yourself. Thank you, Thedrea. Thedrea. I'm going Thedrea. Thedrea. Yes. Apologies. I will step forward and sort of lean over the body, looking as much as I can, examining her without touching, to begin at least, but um, getting close to the the, the face, looking at the cheeks, the eyes, etc. Just trying to. She. Sean, mm -hmm. Yes. I'm going to uh, move close to her, and uh, if I can, I'd love to try to place my parry app of health. Hmm. Interesting. Um, it will only be successful uh, if she is wearing it. I know. So I, I wish to try to either like slip it over her wrist or does it have to, does she have to wear it over her head in order for it to yes. be effective? Okay, then that is what I would wish to do. All right. Uh, as you begin to do that, um, the, uh, the tiefling pilgrim, she holds out her hand and says, what is that? Uh, it is a talisman, a periapt of health. Uh, it uses the prayers of my god to hopefully aid her in her recovery. I wish to see it. Sure. I'm gonna go ahead and hold it out so that they may see. She examines it for a good minute, pulling on it, tapping on it, and hands it back to you. I promise Glaring. you. Glaring. Just. <laughs> I promise you I would sooner do harm to myself than harm to anyone I am caring for. You say you serve Ilmater? Indeed I do. How is uh, Brother Hendrik? Brother Hendrik? Sean out of game. I've not met a Brother Hendrik. You have not met a Brother Hendrik. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, I was like, what is this shenanigans? I was like, unless he serves another temple not in the city, I... Perhaps you mean Brother Hodges? Uh, yes, of course. Brother Hodges. Uh, he is recovering from a rather stressful night in the sewers, but I say, when is a night in the sewers not stressful? She doesn't even crack a smile. Hmm. Um, so, you place it on your head. <laughs> I know my breath, I say, charming. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... The way this periap works, unless I'm mistaken, is that it will prevent you from getting disease, mm -hmm. and that as a day goes on, one, if you are wearing it, when you make your saving throw to have the disease go away, it will, it will go. So, so it says that you are immune to contracting any disease while you wear this pendant, and if you are already infected with the disease, the, uh, the effects of the disease are suppressed while you wear it. Fantastic. Okay, so you put it around her neck, and nothing seems to happen. <sighs> you look at her skin, and it's sallow. Her cheeks are sunken in, and you can see, spreading out underneath her eyes, mm -hmm. the telltale sign of the red web plague that you all encountered mm -hmm. when you all first met. All except for you, Jax. Red web means nothing to you. Yeah. In fact, at least one of us was diseased. Dr. Thadrier. So that is Falkron. Um, Typhon, what do you wish to do? Oh, yeah, I was just asking for the, for the sign, looking at the... Um body to see if I could see the signs of any particular disease. And, Very good. Um, uh, make a medicine check. Yeah. It's kind of getting the same info that we already got, I think. So I have um, a six. Yes, well, even That's with fun. a six, based on what um, Thadrier and uh, 
others have said, you look and like, you can tell, even from a few feet away, that if maybe if you hadn't encountered the disease before, you would not know what it was. But since you have, it looks like red web. But it is curious that no one else seems to have been infected. You glance around the room, and everyone seems to be perfectly fine. This is no disease. Curse, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I fear, Dr. Thadra, you are correct. I, 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 I hope I'm not, but I, I think, yes, indeed, a curse of some sort. Um, I've been looking, looking around, trying to find what possibly could be the source, but it's very possible it was laid upon her from miles and miles away. I, I'm not well-versed in such things. I'm a healer. This this sort of dark magic is beyond my ken. Have you searched the room? Um, a bit. I didn't find anything that was particularly untoward. Would you like me to look? I'm, I'm gonna... Oh, excuse me. What? Who you said know, that? Um, I was just thinking out loud. <laughs> Riv cool. goes to stand uh, next to Jax and just uh, gently holds his arm in a hey, keep it down kind of manner. Jax, are you still in the back? Uh, yeah, I'm, you, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not in the back. I've, he got out of the bag. Oh, I thought no. you were in the back no, still. No, he's oh. out. He got out of the bag in the in the tavern. <laughs> All right. Well, as as you say that, you immediately garner the attention. Some, somehow, she, you your just natural uh, stealth has. Um, managed to conceal you from uh, from various people in there, and as you speak, um, there's a voice in the room not accounted for, and Pilgrim <clears throat> looks around and she starts around and says, Who said that? I uh, don't panic. I'm a noblin gobel. <laughs> what is that? One of our companions. I mm -hmm. am fairly certain that he was not vetted. What is the meaning of this? I've had my jabs. He is he is a part of our party and a, a trusted companion. I, I promise you he will do no harm. Well, outside of your food stores. Make a persuasion check. Gulp. Your owl is very nice. Would you like me to look for anything in here? Ooh, wow. <laughs> very nice fucker. And by that I mean... Wink. <laughs> a roll of a 19 is high enough. And this very stern woman looks down at you. She clenches her fist a bit. Looks like she really wants to grab her sword. But then she relaxes. And I suppose it can't hurt. I just realized that investigation is not my strongest suit. So, yes. What, uh, what does everybody else wish to do? And I will turn to the armored tiefling as well and say, I wouldn't mind searching the room for types of, any type of uh, magical item that may have made its way through your screening. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I take, out a, I take out a book or my spell book and say, it will take but a moment. You can Your eyes narrow, look over my she... shoulder the entire time. That won't be necessary. Pardon me. I'm familiar part with part the of spell. our expertise has Jax. been that we have a lot of experience with curses, including those that prevent healing. A member or two of our party, in fact, voluntarily submitted to being cursed in such a way as to experience firsthand what it's like to resist magical healing. She raises an eyebrow at that. Um, I believe that is a deception. Is that true, Silas? Just the voluntary part. Um, she is pretty, pretty on the ball. So I'm going to ask for a deception check. All right. She raises her eyebrow at you and her eyes narrow. I can't imagine that anyone would ever submit themselves to such a thing. Sometime. But uh, we, you can check with the Temple of Ogma, a uh, brother Corcoran Pebble Moss. 
removed the curse and helped us with it. Multiple members of our group here, all documented as mm. the Temple of Ogma will do. Have you ever submitted yourself to the blow of a training weapon? Of course. Not so different. Mm. Jax, would you mind taking a look underneath the bed, see if you could find any etchings or diamonds? Talisman? Oh, I could have a look. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I will start. All right, so you are investigating under the bed. Typhon is casting detect magic. I don't Rim, say anything. Doing? It's a bit dirty. Um, I uh, don't I... forget to announce what you roll there, Jax. Uh, four. Yeah. Unless someone's given me help. I would once I finish casting the I'm spell. <laughs> Rim, what are you doing? Uh, I uh, come up to Falkren and I speak in a low voice. I feel compelled to pray, but I've no true experience in this. What do you recommend? It is just like any other muscle. You simply need to exercise it and exercise it. We will. Would you like to join me? I would. Excellent. All right. Uh, we will get to that in a moment. Silas, what are you doing? I'm going to use Divine Sense to see if I can see anything celestial or fiendish. Especially Interesting. fiendish. Interesting. At least I'm going to try to use Divine Sense. Mm -hmm. oh. You reach for that power. And it is still forbidden to you. I grow very quiet. Um, Persephone, what are you doing? I'm mostly observing, um, plotting in my head all the questions that if they can't heal her, that I'm going to need to ask Astralis <laughs> to successfully pull this off. Indeed. So, kind of letting them take this and hoping it works. <laughs> okay. Um, um, I do say to, uh, uh, Typhon, I have a potion of greater healing. It seems that that would be completely unhelpful, but just so you know, I'm happy to use it. I, um, I take a quick break from the incantations that I'm casting and I say, your instincts are correct, Bard. Don't waste it on her. And continue casting. Hmm. Um, back to, uh, so obviously with a roll of a four, um, you did not find anything. Uh, it, it, it's a, um, you, you've been under several beds. This is by far the nicest and the cleanest that you've ever been underneath. He's probably falling asleep under there. I, uh, I suppose that if I see Jax having given up the ghost, then maybe I, uh, uh, will also search the room just to try to be useful all right roll that search please investigation yeah oh yes uh well it depends are you just looking around perception or you, investigation will be specific things you're looking at perception would be just taking in the room i would I'm more looking for specifically if there's like a, a glowing evil like <laughs> orb of magic under Orbit. the bed. That sounds to me like more of a perception check. So okay. if you would, if you would be so kind. All right, perception. Here it goes. Oh, you rolled a fifteen. So fifteen. Oh, not bad. Or twelve. 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 Um, yes, twelve. Uh, let's see. Sixteen was investigation. Um, the room is lit by a fireplace, several candelabras. An alcove in the northern end of the room contains three large windows overlooking a chaise and several short bookcases. This is obviously someone's favorite reading nook. There's a covered birdcage, stands next to a table of food and wine, mostly untouched. And to the south, next to the door you entered, is a desk. There are two additional doors in this room along the western wall. Um, so, now that you have taken in the room, seen everything there is to be seen, um, it was a little dim, which is why I wanted you to make a perception check. 
Uh, is there anything you wish to investigate? The bird cage. I'm gonna lift up the cover. Uh, there is a small green parakeet um, <laughs> on a uh, a stand with his head that w- its head underneath its wing. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, Australis says, "Oh, please be careful." If it gets out, it's it's so hard to get it back in. Can we quickly Can try I... an experiment? Um, Can you like show your cat the bird <laughs> through the cameras? <laughs> <laughs> My bird actually, if he'll see himself in the uh, camera, he'll like start to dance for himself. I don't know if he'll do it right now, but nah. That's wicked. <laughs> no. I, uh, my cat just wants to sit on my keyboard. That's nice. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. That's, that's always so helpful when that happens. <laughs> I uh, apparently have changed race into a tabaxi, so that's uh, that's me now. Um, Thank you, Annabelle. <laughs> You're so nice. <laughs> so that is uh, Persephone. Um, Rim, to whom are you praying? I will try to pray to Bahamut. All right. Interesting. Um, I'm going to say make a religion check. I wish to aid him in that. Very well. Make a religion check with advantage. All right. Uh, 19. Very nice. Nice. You Amen. manage to shut out the room. Fairly easy to do as everyone's being quiet and subdued. You close your eyes and find peace and stillness. What do you wish to say to Bob? Um, I wish to ask uh, how we can help her. If it's within our power to aid her, what it is it that we can do? You feel nothing at first but then there's a presence behind you and you can swear you feel something touching your shoulder and then that presence grows and grows massive you don't turn around but you can feel behind you like two enormous wings stretching out to eternity. A being that you can't possibly begin to comprehend. And someone else might be scared, but you feel peace reassurance purpose but that is all that which you're looking for uh, Rim is a specific spell available to uh, divine casters Um, but with a roll of 19 you were somewhat in contact with your god. Persephone, anything you wish to do? Um, I ask Astrellis, tell me everything you remember about the last day that she was well. Uh, okay. Um, and she begins to do that. Um, Typhon, you complete your spell. Detect magic goes up. Looking around the room, you see several small magic items on your companion's person. You see the cloak. Oh, I'm sorry, he's not there. Never mind. You see the uh, the glasses that the elf is wearing glow um, with divination magic. The holy symbol 
around the neck of Pilgrim glows with abjuration magic. And her sword glows with evocation magic. There are several vials on the um, desk. Um, they're in a small uh, wicker basket looking like they should they, they're be um, placed on a belt but you can see glowing through the uh, the breaks in the in the thatch um, something growing with them uh, I want to say restoration magic but I don't think that's actually a thing in D&D &D. necromancy right? necromancy, necromancy yeah. right yes with necromantic and that is all. And, and a, is there something under the beds glowing as well? <laughs> is there anything that would block this, like any metal boxes or any other? Um, or do I feel like I have a complete sense of the room. I can look around, see if there's like a lead line drawer with something, or you know, uh, we'll make something a, make hid a somewhere. Check. Let's do some perceiving here. Not super good at it. Uh, I've got an eight. Um, looking around the room, no, there are no uh, boxes. I mean, there's there's hidey holes and things. There's uh, you know there's a there's a drawer in the table that has the food on it. There's several drawers in the desk, but n and there's the bookshelves and everything. But there's nothing that is would be uh, thick enough to uh, impede your spell. And are we about getting to the point where they were, she was going to t talk us through the day that she fell ill? Was that what you were? Yes, yes, this is, I was letting, this is happening concurrently. Sure. Um, I would like to pay keen attention to that. And also kind of, is, is, does she have like a writing desk or anything? Um, yes, the desk. Uh, that is I missed over, that. Sorry. the desk that is next to the door is, is running desk. It, it appears to be. Eh, I mean, it doesn't strike you as a lady's writing desk, but it is a writing desk, just a a desk, a purely a purely a very nice desk, but a very functional one. Okay, can I <laughs> hopefully uh, look through it a bit while this story is taking place about the last days or so? Before the, um, yeah. sure. Let's see here. So you are you are absent-mindedly listening to the uh, to the story while you search the desk, or are you searching the desk? Trying to multitask, I guess. Trying to multitask. Um, I'm just I... listening to this and then seeing if I can make any connection between any of the letters. I like my thought is if someone you know wrote her a letter and said meet me at this location on that day or something like that, or if um, you know any letter seems out of place or strange or mentions, you know, bringing a particular object or, um, or I have this specific thing for you. Something that seems like bait or drawing her towards something like that was setting her up. All right. Make a perception check. Oh, uh, can I investigate or is Oh it... yes. Uh, okay. Investigation check. Sorry. Cool. Uh, uh, oh, it went twice, but I have a 18. To go. Right. Um, well, as you are searching, you don't find any um, any letters that are of particular note. They all seem to be, you know, there's several that are sealed, um, and there are uh, several that seem to be just normal business. You find one that uh, looks like it was being in, it was in the process of being written, and then uh, some ink got blotted on it, and it was uh, discarded, and the somebody began again with a new letter but it talks it is in a strong uh, angular hand and it talks about uh, an imminent travel to El Terrell and uh, how annoyed he is that um, annoyed whoever is writing this is uh, that um, the uh, you know th th this person does not wish to go but is it's being uh, insisted upon by the council of four um that's so hmm. interesting uh, but with your roll of an 18 you do find a secret compartment oh i 
will open it. You are being very carefully watched. Um, I give you this warning. Right. Finding it, does anyone... Is it... Finding it does not seem to have been a, a problem. <sighs> Opening it will require a roll. Okay. I mean, they, I, my thought is they've let me search the desk. I don't know. <laughs> they have let you search the desk, but you have been... You have had an eye on you the entire time. So um, far, you I haven't am going done to. Any, um, you, you haven't done anything to uh, cross the line that Pilgrim has set, but if you open a secret compartment on this desk, it could very well do so. Okay, um, I am going to then um, sort of uh, massage my hand a little bit as I've been like uh, reach into my pocket where there's a bit of copper wire, um, and silently whisper to Jax using the message cantrip the location of the secret compartment. What are the components for message? Um, so uh, it's it's verbal somatic material. Um, I was trying to hide it just a bit. but uh, I understand. Um, the problem with doing that is that there is a specific feat that you get as a sorcerer uh, silence or subtle spell which yeah. allows you to do exactly what it is you wish to do if you don't have that feat then casting a spell even if it, it's just a cantrip it is noticeable it is as noticeable as drawing a weapon your voice changes timbre if you make a, um, a hand gesture sigils appear in the air that sort of thing it, it can be of course whatever you wish but it is noticeable um, unless you are specified for the class that is able to cast spells subtly, subtly, I yes. cannot allow you to do it unless okay. without roll being very noticed. high on a roll. You, you could allow him to do it, but uh, yes, that's exactly. I could allow you to do it, um, and I could also allow you to do it. I will, I will allow you to do it if you wish to make a sleight of hand check. Uh, but you are, she's watching you like a hawk. If you wish to make a sleight of hand check to see if you can cast the spell, you know, under your breath as you cough or uh, something like that to try and, and uh, obfuscate the fact that you are casting a spell, uh, you are welcome to try. Or you are welcome to try a sleight of hand to just open the secret compartment. Um, I am just going to let... Um, uh, I, you know, I will actually just uh, shrug and... Can I take the letter from the desk that was only half written? Um, you can. It will be noticed. Okay. Um, I am going to say, I do believe this may have some importance to Persephone's tasks. You turn this around and, and, and seems pilgrim. to be related to the business that drew. Lord Ravenguard away from the city. It seems it was not something he was, an action he was keen on. Pilgrim is standing about four feet away from you, her arms folded. She's just looking at you and she looks over at um, Astralis, who sort of looks over and says, Oh, yes, that, that's fine. So, my mother's last days of con consciousness, she. It was shortly after my father left. She had a perfectly normal day, as far as anyone knows. We had dinner. We came upstairs. We talked for a bit. Um, then she went to bed and I went to bed and by the next morning she was like this. Um, we sent for several healers. All of them couldn't find anything wrong with her. We even, well, we even made contact with the guild to see if there was some poison, but there wasn't. It's, it's, doesn't make any sense. 
So she was in this room when she fell ill. She was. Rim is going to go walk to the birdcage and he is going to cast Speak with Animals. <gasps> Very nice. So you remove the the um, the covering of the birdcage. Uh, Sleepy. <laughs> Sleepy. Squeakity, squeak, squeak, squeaker, squeak it. Little friend, Sleepy. may Sleep I speak now. with you for a moment? Speak, speak. Your lady, the one who feeds you, she is not well. Sick. Do you know what happened to her? Eat, eat. Did she eat something? that caused this illness. Me eat. Oh, you eat. Uh, I look around and see if there are, uh, see if there's any uh, bird seed re readily available. There is. Uh, I will uh, put some <laughs> into the cage. This is very true to form for birds. Well done, Sean. <laughs> me like, me happy. I'm glad. Do you know what happened to this woman? Woman? I point to the bed. Hmm. Woman sleep? Did someone make her sleep? Hmm. Dark makes sleep. Me sleep. Make dark. I will get no help from this little friend. <laughs> Such a good idea, though. Worth a shot. All right, I will let the birds sleep. <laughs> Sean, did any of us notice uh, Typhon's perhaps fretting at the desk or anything like that? Uh, when we Possible. When we had a moment, I was going to actually just go over to Jack's and show him the letter. And then um, it's when we were just reading it, just pointing to it. And at a moment when there wasn't someone mm. hovering directly over my shoulder, just hopefully whisper to him. A secret doll. He's and under the bed exactly asleep at the is. moment. Okay, <laughs> well. It's interesting. The one person in the room she might trust less than you is probably the goblin. So if you it's been are able bed to, a while. <laughs> okay. Jax, Jax, would you come out of there? I wasn't asleep. I was searching for something. What was it again? I'll clamber out. And there's just like dust all over him. <laughs> Pilgrim turns her attention to the goblin. Hmm. You didn't find anything. You were snoring. I don't remember. Was I meant to go under there for something? Just asked you to check for any sort of signs or sigils that looked uh, menacing in nature, Jax. Oh, no. Something may have sent me to sleep. That's all right. Why don't you... Why don't you um... Typhon, would you like to have him... Look at anything or check anything else out? Nothing at the moment, no. Um, Pilgrim, mm. did you, did you check, do you check in on your lady throughout the night or are you stationed here inside the room like you currently are? Thadria doesn't need to sleep. He stays here most of the day. When he rests, I watch. Sometimes Gatherin watches. I see. And, and and the night that she fell ill, were, were you were you here with her or? No, I am not attached to the Raven Guard household. Oh. I am a member of the Riders of Helm. I see. So, 
whom do you serve currently in this house? I serve my lord and masters at the assembly. But Ulda was a friend of mine, is, is a friend of mine. But I feel duty bound to see that his family comes under no harm. That was very kind of you. Kindness does nothing to do with it. Well, surely it must. Uh, you would not be sitting here guarding over the lady. Do you, you understand what Uldar has done for this blasted city? Do you understand how important he is? How much potential is being lost here? I understand that I must do what I can to aid this family. And clearly you feel the same. Otherwise you would not be here. I have stated as much. Indeed. So, then we are of similar purpose. And you would want my friends to do everything they can to, to aid this family, yes? If they are capable. And if wow. they are who they say they are. I say I... I'm sure I could give you no word that would convince you. I say I've seen that as much. You are a, a shrewd drudge of character, and that I is... prefer deeds to words. And, indeed, indeed. You are, a, you are a lady of action. I see that. I, being one myself, I... I tip my hat to you. If I Are you patronizing me, dwarf? Of course not. I would never dare dream of such a thing. I'm just saying. <laughs> Make a, okay, I need to know, is this, are you making a serious attempt to butter her up? Are you saying, is what you're saying true? Or is what you're saying, is this a persuasion check or a deception check? The answer is yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then I will allow you to make the choice. Persuasion what? or deception. Oh, God. I'm rubbish at both. While she's distracted like this, can Indeed, I tell yes. Jax the message <laughs> about the, the secret the... door? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the... <laughs> Good, I'll wait for that, and then yes. All right, so I'm going to go with... Let's see. Yeah. So uh, regard... What you roll here will determine whether or not Typhon gets the opportunity. Oh, fantastic. All right. I feel like making her really mad would also work. Let me, let me make a roll. <laughs> Well, apparently she has not had much dealing with dwarves because she rolled a seven <laughs> on her insight. <laughs> so she raises an eyebrow and nods. She seems to have taken your measure and likes what she has seen, Falkrin. Mm. Um, and she is distracted, Typhon. <laughs> I will, as quietly and concisely as I can, communicate to Jax the location of the hidden drawer. How do you do this? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, I asked him before if I could have some help looking at the uh, piece of paper, and so I will hold it up and kind of point to the different letters as if I don't understand this. The way that the pen just off here, and I'll put it over my face, <laughs> and uh, as I'm pointing towards him to kind of hide, um, hide myself <laughs> Lovely. and say, and in, like, you know, Bottom side of the desk, to the left, under the drawer. This is excellent. Not, no no roll needed. Like yeah. No roll needed. <clears throat> Very nicely done. All right. I will Very stealthily well. do it then. All right, Jade. Roll a sleight of hand, please. Would you like stealth as well, or with advantage? Oh, it's, it's, just... it's sleight of hand, is it? Or oh, well, to open it. Yeah, I didn't know if you wanted me to do it stealthily. Um, I'll let you choose. You can either you roll a stealth or roll sleight of hand. Um. So do stealth uh, at normal or sleight of hand at advantage. Oh, sleight of hand at advantage. 24. <laughs> Excellent. You hit the thing. It opens up. Just just for my own question, what is a sleight of hand that is not stealthy? Like True. <laughs> that is one of those Juggling little nitpicky knives, things. I guess. <laughs> one of those little nitpicky things. Um, stealth has more to do with moving. Um, sleight of yeah. hand has more to do with how quickly you're able to palm something, do something with your hand. Oh yeah, no, no, absolutely, something. absolutely. I just like I was just intrigued by the idea of like someone doing a sleight of hand that wasn't stealthy, and I was just like, <laughs> what on That's, earth would that look like? That looks like a street performer doing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you have the knot that's not really a knot. 
And then you Jax, <laughs> you find a small bronze key. Don't eat it. <laughs> who are you talking to? He knows who I'm talking to. What? <laughs> Get away from there! I didn't do anything. Make a deception check. I was looking for the traps. <laughs> God, deception. Oh, God, deception. <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> one moment. That's with a minus one. I was looking right, for food. Here. Everyone out. Oh, can we get food now? Ostrella, uh, please. I, I know that she's just doing her job, but these people are to be trusted. Jax, if what I did you find? Oh, you're muted. I, I was looking for traps. Make a persuasion or make a deception. I thought check. I'd, I thought I'd <laughs> no. already done that. Yeah, no, you did. Yeah. yeah, she says, I don't believe it. No, Jax, what did you find? Oh, I was looking for some loot, but I didn't find any. Typical. He needs to leave immediately. Oh, oh it, was, it was looking for some loot for you lot. No, absolutely. I, I completely understand. I will escort him out in the hallway myself. Jax, oh. come with me. Okay. Lady Ostradus. You were quite right. This is your house, but please. This is unsafe and unsanitary. A goblin of all things. No, well. Are we... You're outside. We're in yet, yeah, that's why I say but like yeah. a shout. Yeah. It. <laughs> <Astralis>. <laughs> she says, I, I trust these people. Well, I, I trust Persephone and, and she trusts these people. So <laughs> you will do as I wish, or I will have to ask you to leave. And Pilgrim, her, uh, her n nose flares, her eyes widen, and she's just like, you insolent. <laughs> she steps away, her fists clenched, and goes and stands by the bed. Beautiful um, as ever. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, um, per perhaps we should see about uh, your rooms. I suppose so. Uh, is there anything you wish, Persephone, for? Uh, let's let's talk outside of this room. I'd like to talk to you. Yes. Um. So, available for you all are two guest rooms, hmm. the barracks, or you can use um, your sleeping packs on the floors of other rooms. Australis motions you to come to her room, Persephone. Um, so that is where you will be and you will have a conversation there. For the rest of you, what is your preference? I would like a bedroom. Very well. Typhon has a bedroom. It's oh. certainly not as large as this room, but it is large enough to be worthy of the, um, what you would expect the Grand Duke of Baldur's Gate to have at his disposal for his guests. Rim. I will sleep in the barracks. Very well. Jax. I will find a table somewhere. I believe Jax and myself will uh, uh, take our bedrolls to Typhon's room. If that's right. all right. Um, certainly enough room for a dwarf and a goblin and whatever Typhon is uh, in that room. A charmer. <laughs> <laughs> Silas, there is a guest room available to you um if rim is going to the barracks alone i would actually ask him to stay in the guest room with me uh, all right i'll do that i will sleep on the floor Jax, it seems to be apparent that no one is going to allow you to sleep on a table in fact as soon as you are found by anyone quite a commotion is raised and they kick you out Oh, out of the house. 
out of the house. Oh, no. Uh, I had Jax come into the room with me. Oh, okay. Bed rolls. All right. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> so I know better than Ooh. to let him roam the yes. house. Uh, okay. <laughs> Very well. Persephone, Not until yeah. the lights are down, anyway. Oh, Persephone, gosh. you and Australis sit in her room. Um, she has a small sitting desk, a table. Um, it is a gorgeous room, and she sort of sits there with her hands clenched between her legs. Says, I hope I'm not making a terrible mistake. Well, what choice do you have? What choice oh, do any of us have? So Catherine said we could just leave. And, and leave Baldur's Gate to what sort of fate? You're doing the right thing. It's scary and it might not work, but it's the right thing. I hope you're right. Me too. Um, oh, don't say that. That makes it worse. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm scared too, but I'm going to do it. Uh, okay. Um, you see for yourself, she, she's, she's older, obviously, but the same hair, the same height. You could wear her clothes. All right, so if we're going to do this, I, I want as much armor, let's say, as possible. So we're going to need to pick something that she wears often. Maybe if there's jewelry that she never takes off, I need to have it. Right, um, okay. Jewelry and clothing, certainly that can be provided. Tell me, is there anything that she does, like a, a tick or a saying or, or something that that if you know her is just correct. Well, um, if she's angry, she uses middle voice, middle names. Um, All parents do that. Well, uh, let me think, let me think. Um, oh, oh, oh. When she wishes to be very serious, she clasps her hands in front of her very tightly. Almost like and she's going... To like, Show it to me, yeah. She shows it to you. It looks like it's like so tight that she could use them as a weapon. Like she's holding holding a, a sword in her hand. Okay. That's good. Anything else like that? Um, when she is... Uh... Oh, let's see. Well, I suppose, I suppose you'd, you'd need to know if, if, what she would look like if she was angry. Um, if she's angry, she straightens her clothing. Wonderful. And uh, what if she's feeling like she's winning an argument? Does she, she get never, quiet? She, she never smiles when she's at court. And does she have any sort of particular relationship with either of the four people there or, or even with guards or people that, that we might see while we're there? Well, of course, you'll go with Sir Catherine, and and our house will go. And I, and I suppose your your friends. Um, really, I wouldn't recommend speaking to anybody else. Um, I can do the, as much of the talking as necessary, uh, at least enough to get in. You have been ill. I mean, she has. You both of you have been ill, of course. So people would understand, I suppose, if you weren't very communicative. And do you think that it would be wise to say that I've been ill with Red Web and cured? No, definitely not. No, no, that, that would be terrible. If Red Web in the upper city, oh, that, that would cause a it's, tremendous panic. It's, it's incurable. So I won't say that. Um, <laughs> it is curable, but at a cost. Got it. Uh, all right. Um, I guess they don't need to know what I've been ill with. I can just tell them that it's none of their business. Um, grief. Grief, yes, true. Um, let's see. Uh, the, what I know of the four I have right here. Uh, do, do you think that there's any political things, sayings, phrases that... I need to make sure that I say or or avoid. Um, no, it's it's very straightforward as far as ceremony is concerned. There's a tradition of calling for the vote for a a new um, archduke um, at, at sunrise. That's why we have to get up so bloody early. But 
everyone will be tired. Everyone will want it to be over with as quickly as possible. Speak clearly to the point and leave as soon as you can. And let me just get this straight that I want to delay the vote and for how long? They'll certainly ask why. Well, because we think that the Grand Duke might still be alive, correct? Yes. And so I think what what would be a reason, reasonable time to wait to see if we find him? What do you think she would suggest? I, 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 don't, I don't know. Um, a week? Sh- a day? I, I, I don't know. I didn't think that through. I, right. If, if it's just a day, then she'll just wait and have the vote after a day. Right. Month. I'll try for a they'll, month. They'll never accept a month. That, that. But I can try for it, and then we can negotiate down from there. I, I, I didn't think this through. What, what, what will we do after? I, I only thought to the point itself. There, there, will, be, there, 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 will, there will insist that it happens, and then, then we'll be right back where we started. You, you can't keep doing this. No, but it'll buy us some time. For what? To maybe find your uncle to to try and cure her. I suppose, yes. My uncle, your father. Yes, uh, um, a little, little time, I suppose, is is is, is worth worth it. Yes, it is. It's our only choice tonight. All right. And um, I'm going to. Uh, I what I want to do is a. Uh, I, I'm sensing that she's starting to panic and like, am I getting the sense too that she is physically panicking too? Like at the point of- Yes, oh, most okay. definitely. So um, I'm going to sing, um, oh my goodness, what's it called? Uh, uh, not Bardic Inspiration, but that's what's in my head. Uh, when I sing- it, Song of rest. rest? The Song of Rest, yes, thank you. Oh, she goes and sits on the bed as you begin to sing and she's entranced and she, you see her calming and then she lies down and falls asleep. Uh, there is a, a chaise that you could sleep on or there's plenty of room on her bed. Um, I'll, I'll sleep in the bed because she's scared. All right. Um, is everybody just sleeping through the night? Is anybody setting a watch? Uh, with with luck, we sleep through the night. Why don't you let us know? Um, yeah, that, was a, that was a shake of the head to J- Jax there. I'm assuming I'm going walkabout. All right. So if you go on a walkabout, <laughs> you will, n- depends on how long this walkabout goes, you do not gain the benefits of fourth level until you take a long rest. Yep. That won't be like all night. Like, I've had a little sleep under the, under the bed. Okay. Um, well, obviously, I haven't spoke to uh, Typhoon or that yet, so I'm assuming they Typhoon would ask what I found mm-hmm. as we're in the same room. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll <clears throat> let's take care of that then. Mm. So we've got Falkrin, Typhoon, and Jax in one of the guest rooms. Jax, what was in that compartment? Yes, Jax, what did you find? Oh, I've had a big key. Shh. I've had a big key. <laughs> well, well done, Jax. I'm going to go look where it opens. Oh, I'll wait till oh, everyone's in bed, though. Oh, Jax. I don't think it's a good idea. Typhon, is, this isn't a good idea. It's not, but I'm so curious. I don't. The two what? of you. Ah. Uh, Hmm. <laughs> did you see Typhon did you see anything in the room that you think the key might go to nothing not that I can remember did I DM I don't think so you did not I didn't even see any chests or anything locked there were two uh, there were two doors in addition to the door that you came in mm-hmm. I have no idea What if you oh, make Jack. me invisible? What? Invisible. Who can make you invisible? I can. He's a wizard. 
<laughs> you can make people invisible? Well, it's something I'm working on, but uh, oh. only just once with the uh, the item I finished in the Beholder's lab. It's called Dust of Disappearance. The, uh, oh. I'm covered in it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you two do whatever you wish. I'm going to sleep and pray and pray. Jax, I think... I don't think there's anything I can do to stop you from finding where that key goes, can I? Well, you could tell me where it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I could end up anywhere. <laughs> hmm. No, I was going to say, where would you hide your value? But no, none of this is going to work if I just ask. Um, no, I I can't no. advise you to do it. But if you're going to do it, you should take this in case you get surrounded. And I will give him the dust of disappearance. Only as an emergency. Only so as you're an emergency. not obtained. And if you do... You are about to be arrested if you feel you're about to be detained. Wait for us. Oh, do you? Could are you, you find your way back to my apothecary by the by the uh, by the gate? By the old vault. At the gate. best gate. <laughs> I can't remember you were carrying me. Bill Gate. Hmm. <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> well, just slink in some bushes somewhere then outside until we leave i'm sure you'll find me what are if, you if i'm just if something were to happen right? are you seriously going to let him roam the house by himself do you think you can stop him he's a jacks you know the room that that key probably goes to is right off of Lady Ravengard's. Good idea. I'll no, check this first. No. <laughs> it's meant as a deterrent, Jax. You can, oh God, you're gonna make me do it. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Get in the backpack. Only if you've got food in there. There, of course, I've always had food in there. You sit in the backpack, therefore I have to have food in the backpack. Why do you want me in the backpack? Because if we're going to go ahead and check You're going to lock it, aren't you? No, I'm not going to lock... How do you lock a backpack? I don't know. Uh, Jax, do you want my help or not? Yes, you want my help. Yes, you want... The answer is yes. All right, so if you get in the backpack, I can at least carry you to the room, and then if you put the dust of disappearance on yourself, you should then be, at least have access to, to look around with... Oh, God, I'm going to be arrested. This is terrible. So but, kind of you to suffer through his wind. Typhon, shut it. How far away was the bedroom? It's not that far, is it? Um, well, you are now in the guest wing, which is near to the opposite side of the house. Oh, lovely. I remember the way. Excellent. Well, best of luck, you two. I really wish you the best. If I hear... <laughs> Anything, I'll come running, I assure mm. you. Thanks so much. All right. It's a crazy idea you have. I don't know where you came up with it. Well, I could cause a distraction. Must be, no, no, no. I could no. make a big tree grow in the rid of the house. I am going to the ladies' room to offer prayers. You are going in the backpack and coming with me. And we'll probably be arrested by Dawn. Shall we? Okay. Lovely. All right. Um, Rim and Silas. <laughs> oh my God. What um, could possibly go wrong? That's all right. Quite a bit. Um, how are you feeling? Disconnected. I'm tired. This may sound an inopportune time to mention, but I connected 
with Bamut, and it gave me a very strong sense of peace. I haven't spent my lifetime connecting to that, but even after this one time, I can imagine losing that would cause an immense deal of grief. We yes. will... We will try to help you find the path back. We are at your side. Thank you, Rim. I am still dedicated to my lady, though she will not see me. She will see your actions. That is the true test of faith. To persevere in your beliefs, even when they are challenged. Mm. I can only hope. I've been pondering what it would be like without that divine touch. In my mind, I've been going over how I might be different. How I might fight differently. I didn't become who I am after she chose me. But she has changed me. And like I said, I can only I can only be myself and hope that she sees and that it pleases her. It's wonderful for you, Rim, that you felt the divine presence. You should speak to Falkrin about it. Falkrin will know. Rim puts a claw gently on your shoulder. Thank you, Rim. I encourage you, continue to reach out. I encourage you to do the same. How does one reach out to a wall? It's funny, Rim. I had a vision of my lady as a statue. And I find that might be closer to the nature of my relationship with her now than I would prefer. Just staring up at a statue. Tell me, even if she wasn't to answer you, do you still believe in what she stands for? Of course. Then you've already answered your own question. That wall that you envision is inconsequential. If you believe in her mission, you will continue to act accordingly. Yes, Maybe. but Rim, even as my father and my mother, as I have to assume any any paired couple would know, without reciprocation, if it's always one person, not both, that can lead to great pain, Rim. But perhaps that pain is the truest test of your faith. Perhaps right. that pain is uh, what you need to move through to prove I, your loyalty. I, I suppose I shouldn't have uh, I shouldn't have gone into the service of a lady of grief if I wanted to be smiling all the time. <laughs> well, but suffer. Do me a favor, Rim. Anything. If you see me act in a way that I have in the short time you've seen me, if I go to help someone, 
and you can tell that I have a look of disappointment on my face when I don't have any divine fire flowing through me, when I don't have any healing abilities, when I don't have the ability to end the battle decisively with righteous fury. I'll take that hand on my shoulder again in those moments. Rim smiles, and he grips your shoulder even more tightly. It will always be here for you. Thank you, Rim. I'm afraid that tomorrow is going to test all of us, especially our friend Persephone. I, she will be putting on a grand performance from watching her in the lesser theaters to uh, it's it's interesting it's almost as though she's instantly moving from theater to politics and everyone knows that an actor could never race up in politics but I, she's going to find out. Continue. Tomorrow will be a big day, Rim. Let us get rest. Agreed. Off to bed. All right. Let us check in with Falcon and Jax. Typhon, do you go to sleep? Oh, I think about it a bit, and that's uh, some spell books I want to look through, but no, I will follow with them. All right, the three of you head back to Lady Ravenguard's bedchambers. Um, Persephone, do you go to sleep? Okay, Rim and Silas, you are asleep. We are three adventurers heading back into the icy depths of the gaze of Pilgrim And that is where we pick up when we come back from our break. Dum, dum, dum. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, oh. so <laughs> much. So first <laughs> idea ever. <laughs>